In the next seven minutes, I'm going to tell you the three lessons that I learned in 2023 that changed my life, that made me feel much less needy and clingy, much more calm and centered, and I believe they can do the same for you. I used to be the sort of stereotypical nice guy, people pleaser. I was a diehard perfectionist. Even things like walking down the street, I would obsess over like, do I make eye contact with this person? Are they gonna think I'm weird? Like, what do I do? What do I do? Probably to a slightly unhealthy degree. And that leads us to the very first lesson, which I think is pretty commonly said, but this year I genuinely integrated it into kind of my worldview, and that is things aren't personal. See, in the past, when I was going through those kind of people-pleasing behavior patterns, I was taking everything that everybody in my environment did as a reflection as to my own self-worth. I took it very personally when somebody did like me or didn't like me. Those things had a huge sway on my inner state, which is why passing people on the street became a little nerve wracking. Like if they didn't smile back at me or whatever, would that make me feel bad? I don't know. But the truth is that those people are not responsible for our inner state. I have a video about that somewhere up here. You can check it out. So often in life, in fact, in the vast majority of cases, things just aren't personal. If somebody cuts you off in traffic and you get angry, it's not personal. That person cuts off everybody. It's not about you. If your relationship falls apart, or if you don't get a job that you really want, or if somebody rejects you when you're asking them out, even if they're like, ew, don't talk to me. We have a tendency to take those things very personally, but even in the case as the person saying, ew, don't talk to me, that's actually them. That's just the way they are. That's not a reflection really on you. The chances are that they probably do that to everybody. But what we tend to do is take those things personally and make a judgment about ourselves, often a negative one. But when we step back and see that it's not personal, it's not actually about us, people who reject you, people who let you down, even if they actually act like they want to hurt you, it's probably just because you remind them of somebody else who let them down in their past, or they're trying to work out some pattern in their own head. It's really very, very unlikely that you are the actual source of their issue. And when we're taking everything in life that happens personally and making it about us, and that leads to having regrets in life or, or stories that say, oh, if I had only done this, then things would be better, or I should have done that, or I didn't do that. And at that point in my life, I had a lot of these. I had the feeling that I should be somewhere else in life, or I should have done things different, and I hadn't, and I had screwed up, and my life was doomed. And that brings us to lesson two, which is amor fati. This is a stoic concept, it was also popular with Nietzsche, and it's basically the idea that as much as possible, you should try to love everything that happens in your life. And this is a somewhat Eastern philosophy idea as well. Life is the ultimate guru, or that life provides us all of the time opportunities to see within ourselves the areas we need to improve. Honestly, this is like one of the most transformative things I have ever learned. Because if you remember when we were talking about taking things personally, we talked about how we have a tendency to externalize and say, I want this person to do this and then I'm gonna feel good. We say, well, it's their fault that I don't feel good inside. But if we examine that, that is a red flag by life to say, you need to do some work on yourself. What we tend to do very often is we say, no, I'm not the problem, they're the problem. If I'd only had that job, if I've only had that car, if I'd only had that relationship, then I would be happy. This wasn't supposed to happen. I should have been somewhere else. I should have done something else. It wasn't supposed to be like this. We create an alternate reality that doesn't exist in our mind and say, that would have been better. That should have happened instead. We stop interacting fully with our current reality. We stop being wholeheartedly alive. We create an alternate reality we prefer and we reject the life we have. When you have that alternate story about how things could have been, guess what? They couldn't have been that way because they're not. So amor fati is the idea to love your fate, to embrace the life you have and embrace all of those opportunities to learn, even the things you don't maybe like, to see them as necessary. The challenges are challenging because those are the areas you need to grow. It's like, why is it hard for a little kid to ride a bike? Because they don't know how to ride a bike yet. But does that mean they're bad at riding a bike or they should just never ride a bike? Of course not. It just means they need to practice riding a bike. If you're getting your heart broken in relationships, does that mean you should never try another relationship? Does that mean you can never love again? Of course not. Maybe it just means you need practice. It's an area you need to grow. And these areas in life that are revealed through 
traumatic situations, through challenges, through the things we don't want to do, we don't want to experience, we resist. When we resist them, we don't learn the lesson because we're like the kid who never gets back on the bike. See, I was kind of running fully on autopilot, so I would interact with somebody on the assumption that they were responsible for my internal state and I would do whatever I could to try to make them happy, make them like me, make them like validate me. If they didn't, I would think I did something wrong and take it personally. I would then resist that because I had the imagined version of how things should have been. Oh, I screwed it all up. It was supposed to be different because I was taking all of these things personally and telling myself that meant something fundamental about who I was. I wrote a negative self-concept into my mind and said, well, this is another limitation. This is another chain. Can't do that. I guess I'm bad at that. That brings us to the third and final lesson, which is that you get to choose the meaning that you give to events in your life. The stories we tell ourselves about who we are and our limitations and the reasons we're not good at things, they're just stories. You have the power to interpret these events however you want. If you're not taking them personally, and if you're choosing to love the opportunity to grow in life, if you do that, then you start to see that the meaning you have been giving things on autopilot is not true. And in a way, each of us is kind of living in this personal matrix world where our thoughts are very self-reinforcing and often very limiting. And we can restrict our point of view to a very narrow area. If you were to wake up tomorrow with complete amnesia, you could very well forget that you're not good enough and that you don't like yourself. You would still be you. You just wouldn't have quite the same memories, right? Which means it's not objectively true, it's just something you think to be true. And so many of these things we can choose by seeing that process to rewrite our interpretation of ourselves, to change who we think we are fundamentally because we realize that we've been building it on kind of faulty assumptions that aren't really true. And when you do that, you free yourself because you are no longer bound to that autopilot sense of self. You no longer have to be who you thought you had to be. If you're curious about more information on that, specifically I have a video about becoming limitless through healing your inner child up here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment below, share a lesson you learned this year that was life-changing. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.